do awesome faster. Faster dead. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome you here to Church on Paddlefish here at Disney <laughs> Springs because we are here to do two things, bring glory to God and bring joy to this couple, Molly and Bo. On behalf of their families, the Hurdy family and the Adams family, welcome to this celebration. In the midst of these crazy times, it is right to celebrate and right to give honor to God and right that these two people, Bo and Molly, would come together and say yes to marriage, yes to life together. Would you pray with me? Lord God Almighty, thank you for this day, which is lovely and hot and beautiful and wonderful. We thank you for these families, these friends who've gathered from California and the Midwest and all points in the United States to come here to celebrate with Molly and Bo, because you have brought them together to be united as one flesh, one couple, in your name, to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, to the power of the Spirit. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all the ups and downs and twists and turns that brought Bo and Molly to this place. We thank you for what's about to transpire, where you're going to make two people one. We thank you for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Who gives this lovely woman to be married to this wonderful man? Her mother and I. You should hug. So our God is all-powerful. He's sovereign over everything. He's the Alpha and the Omega, beginning the end. He's eternal, our eternal God. And he brought us here today, but he's also a personal God, right? He's intimate, and he's right here in our midst right now together in this wedding. He's intricately involved in all the details of our lives, and he cares and loves for Bo and Molly. He knitted them in their mother's wombs and brought them here today. It was by no mistake, no accident, that the Lord brought Bo and Molly together because he cares. He had a plan and this special wedding day would happen. The Lord knew about it long ago. And he's here right now intimately in this moment with Bo and Molly as they establish a covenant relationship with each other and with him. Our God is a covenant making and a covenant, a covenant keeping God. The Bible is full of stories to show God's faithfulness in his promises. So Bo and Molly here, to confirm your intent to be married and form a new covenant relationship before God, 
Please affirm by responding to these questions with we do, if you agree. So have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? We do. We do. Will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? We do. And will you put Christ first in the center of your marriage, building your lives upon the rock who is Christ? We do. Okay. So what I'd like to do is let's look into God's word and read some scriptures about our God and about what he says about marriage. So I'd like to call up the father of the bride, Scott Adams, reading from 1 John chapter 4. I'll come up by you. How's that? So they can see you. Okay. So this passage is awesome because it's super simple. <laughs> super simple. It's If you don't get it, you'll get it through this. Dear friends, it says 1 John 4, 7 through 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love this is how God showed his love among us he sent us his only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins dear friends since God so loved us we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him. He is in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so, know and rely on the love of God for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because the fir he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or a sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother or sister. Word. Amen. Thank you. Okay, and uh, to hear a second scripture, we call up the bride's uncle, Glenn Wagner again, to read from Ecclesiastes. In keeping with our theme of simplicity, hear these words of wisdom, that we are created for human togetherness, human connection, and human intimacy. From Ecclesiastes, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may, one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Amen. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, I had, uh, I'll keep this brief, but I had a chance to actually see Bo and Molly's new apartment and inside was like an erector set of what used to be a queen bed frame and a, and a uh, TV stand. And it's in a tiny little box. And we've all been there. We've ever opened up a box and there's instructions a mile long and you figure out how many. And some of us just jump right into it to try to figure it out without reading the instructions. And I think marriages can be like that too. We just sort of jump, can jump into it without really looking at the instruction book of life for marriage, which is in uh, God's word. And problems often come about when we don't read or obey what's in God's word. So it's a little bit like not following the instructions of, a, of the uh, TV stand. So as I, I think about uh, and reflect on 
what's God's view on marriage? When did we first learn about marriage? It actually started in the very beginning of man in Genesis. And really, God designed marriage for, for three reasons that I pulled out of there. One is around companionship, right? So in the beginning of time, God created the universe. And every day, for the first six days, he had created majestic, he spoke it into existence. And after he was done, God declared it, it was good. However, when he made man and he made Adam, and Adam was there naming everything, but when he got to Adam, he said it's not good for man to be alone. And that's where we first see the intimate connection of, of marriage of man and woman coming together. And of course, when he created Adam, was from the dust of the earth, but he didn't create Eve from the same way. He put the man asleep, reached into his side and pulled a rib out. And, and uh, Adam declared, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And this is this unique relationship, created differently, completely different composition. But in this spirit-led way we're about to do, we become one flesh. And that's how God fashioned it. He did not want man to be alone and desired our need, the way we're designed to have companionship, not just with the Lord and Creator, but with each other in a marriage relationship. And so, like Glenn just read from Scripture, the three strands, but God being that, that main uh, strand. And it's that intimate relationship between husband and wife with God that really drives a healthy marriage. And you'll see that as there's a direct correlation between your walk with the Lord and um, the strength of your marriage. And if one falls away, that's when trouble happens. So your walk with God has to be number one. So walking with Jesus daily and building each other up in the Lord is critical. And the second reason is about that marriage was created was really about uh, showing us a picture of the relationship between Jesus and his bride, the church. And we think about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's this unique relationship. They're one, they're all God, but they manifest and show different inner relationships with each other and the world in unique ways. Uh, we even read that even though that uh, the Father loves the Son and the Son actually submits to the Father in Scripture, we learn about that. And so it's this unique relationship too that we can draw a connection. And that's again about what we're about to do here as two individuals become one flesh, driven by the Spirit. We also, in Ephesians 5.21, it says, we are told to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, who is the ultimate head of the church and the head of any healthy, thriving marriage. Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church. That's a tall order. And even be willing to sacrifice and die for, for her. And Bo, that means to love Molly sacrificially and lead her spiritually. And Molly, this means to honor Bo and follow his leading as you do to the Lord. Marriage is meant to model and display God's glory to all creation. And the other reason, alas, is to raise godly children, if and when that ever happens. And I know you're not in a rush, but that is another element of marriage, is, is, is um, multiplying. And with that, also as parents, teaching them God's word, bringing them up in a, in a Jesus-centered home, uh, modeling God's unconditional love. It's, our love is imperfect, we know, but it's the closest thing we often get to our children experiencing the unconditional love of our Creator. And uh, it's also to help them identify their spiritual gifts and use them and to serve others. So these are really the, the, the reflections. We think about how God designed marriage and this special day that we all get to be part of to see the two of you join together. And so to move it on, because I see the fans moving there, uh, let's move to the vows. Again, this is a covenant vow to be made to each other, but before God. And uh, both uh, Molly and Bo have each prepared uh, their handwritten vows or personal vows. And so, Bo, I'd like you to read yours first. Sounds great. Thank you, Dad. That was super special. Here we go. <laughs> I love you, Molly. I love that you love Jesus more than anything. I love that you put the happiness of others before your own. I love you, Molly. You are sweet beyond belief, hilarious as can be, and the most caring person of all. As I stand here now, moments away from the happiest moments, moment of my life, all I can do is thank God for the biggest miracle ever, meeting you. From the moment you texted me that you saw the light of Jesus in me, God has used you to love and to be there for me in the most important ways. 
Molly, I will always love Jesus and walk in relationship with him. I commit to helping you become all that God wants you to be. I will listen to your dreams and will always help you chase them. I will laugh with you and I will cry with you. I promise that Jesus, you and me, are going to bring light and love to many throughout our adventures together. I love you, Molly. I don't kiss you yet. I know you want to lean in there. Well, the time is coming. Time is coming. All right. And Molly, if you would, if you would, uh, you need help with your flowers or? Thanks, Sydney. All right. Bo, you are the love of my life who has filled up pages of my prayer journals long before I ever knew you. You are who I saw when I looked up at the stars, knowing that you are out there somewhere. And here you are. <laughs> so when I met you, it was like I already knew you because I walked with you in my dreams. But when I got to know you, I realized you were greater than what I could ever imagine. You have cultivated the light God has put inside me and you cherish the most fragile parts of me. You propel me into the life of adventure that I have always longed for. You light up every room you enter <laughs> and you bring the presence of God into every conversation. You illuminate the world with hope and empower people with love. To partner with you is the greatest joy of my life. I love to change the world with you as you have forever changed mine. Whatever we may face, we face it with God and we face it together. And I will be here with you all the days of your life. I love you now, I love you forever. <laughs> all right, man. Awesome. All right. And our God is, loves symbols and uh, we, we use rings to kind of seal the vows that you just heard. Bali, Bo expressed to Molly and Molly expressed to Bo. And, and the ring is an outward symbol of an inward commitment. In our covenant making God that we've talked about, he uses symbols to remind us of his promise and his faithfulness, like, like Noah with the rainbow, right? And so this ring, right, is perfectly round, never, no beginning, no end, kind of signals et, uh, eternal love for one another with no beginning, with no end. And it's made of precious metal that kind of talk to the purity and the specialness and the value of this marriage covenant you're making. And so, Bo, I'll hand you this ring. And, hold on. <laughs> Bo, so Molly's going to put that ring on because she trusts you, <laughs> because you're a man of noble character, and she's given you her whole heart, as you just heard. So, Bo, I'd like you to place the ring on Molly's finger. Wrong ring. <laughs> Place it on Molly's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love for you. As a token of my love for you. My faith in you. My faith in you. And my gratitude to God for you. My gratitude to God for you. Awesome. All right, I got this one right. Molly, ring for Bo. Yeah. And again, the true value of this ring, again, is not in the metal it's made, but what it symbolizes in this covenant. And I know Bo will value wearing that ring because you've given him the greatest gift, the gift of significance, of respect, of unconditional love and your belief in him. So Molly, if you would place the ring on Bo's finger and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love for you. As a token of my love for you. My faith in you. My faith in you. And my gratitude to God for, for you. And my gratitude to God for you. Okay, so we've exchanged vows, we've symbolized them with uh, rings being shared. And so one other element we're gonna try in these conditions, we'll see if it works, is this idea that we've talked about already in scripture about how two become one, not just one, but one flesh. And so we're gonna do a unity candle here, I'm gonna set the stage for it, that Bo and Molly came in here as individuals, each having their own uh, gifts from God, their own uniquenesses. And today by them saying yes, there are these two distinct lights coming together as you join in marriage. And you're going to be merging these two lights that you brought in here as one. 
And so this is what the Lord meant when he said, on this account, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. From now on, your thoughts shall be for each other rather than your individual selves. Your plan shall be mutual. Your joys and sorrows shall be shared alike. And as you take a candle and together light the center one, you will extinguish your own candles, letting go the center candle, or, or lighting the cent center candle, forming the two coming together, and you'll extinguish your individual candles. This signifies coming one, one flesh, with the Lord. As this one light can no longer be divided, neither shall your lives be divided, but be a united testimony that glorifies God. May the radiance of this one light be a testimony of your unity in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would, bow your heads in prayer. I'm going to pray, and then at the conclusion of the prayer, we'll ask Bo and Molly to go over there and do the unity candle. Father God, well, you are great. You are awesome. You are so good. Thank you for being here right here in our midst. You're always here. You're always close. You just heard the vows that Bo and Molly just made before you, and we believe in faith that you've not united them as one in one flesh. We are thankful for the gift of marriage, this blessing of companionship together. We just ask you to bless Bo and Molly in their marriage. You protect them, Lord. What you've said is what you've put together, let no man separate. And we pray that over these two here today. We pray that this marriage is a testimony that brings glory to you, Father, by the fruit, by their fruit. The others will know God because of your witness in this marriage to see your goodness, your kindness, your humility, your grace, your love abounding and, and contentment that we know, Father, only comes from you, not of this world. Lord, we just lift up this precious couple before you, and we lift it in your precious and mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys want to do the unity candle? So how long do we allow them to do this? Or maybe both use the lighter and light the candle. There you go, perfect Molly. Put it all in there. Okay, well, we're thankful that the Lord's promises of unity are not temperamental like, like they are with the wind. <laughs> His promises are true, He's faithful, and we know that they're unified together. So we, at your seats, we'd like to all say a blessing over you. You all have that from number six. We thought we'd read this in sort of corporate prayer together. Everybody got it? Okay, let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Awesome prayer. Okay. So because Bo and Molly have desired each other in marriage and witnessed this before God and this whole gathering here, 
and people on live stream that weren't able to be here. They're affirming their acceptance of the responsibilities of such a union. And they pledge their love and faith to each other, sealing their vows and the giving and receiving of rings. I do proclaim that they are husband and wife in the sight of God and man, that all people here and everywhere recognize and respect this holy union now and forever. So as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, by the power vested in me by the state of Florida, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Bo, you may kiss your bride. So I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Bo Hootie. Yay!